the Shenango Valley focuses on retaining its young population to sustain the community, Youngstown's International Towers residents return home following the aftermath of the Realty Tower explosion. Those stories and more on today's Daily Buzz. Hello everyone, welcome to the Daily Buzz. I'm Mike Moliterno. The Shenango Valley is facing a repopulation challenge, described metaphorically as a bucket with a hole sitting in a sink. To keep the bucket full, you can either patch the hole or increase the water pressure. Larger cities attract many people, even as others leave, but rural areas like the Shenango Valley don't have that constant flow of newcomers. Penn Northwest Development Corporation, based in Hermitage, is focusing on patching the bucket by retaining young people in the community. The organization has launched a repopulation initiative aimed at ensuring there are workers to fill local jobs and to counter the region's population loss. The average age in the Shenango Valley is higher than the state average, which makes it harder to replace retiring workers. While the average age in Pennsylvania is 40.9 years, it's 44.7 in Mercer County and 44.2 in Lawrence County. To address this, Penn Northwest is focusing on keeping young people in the area. The organization's Director of Workforce Development, Jake Rickert, visits high schools, career and technical centers, and colleges in the region. He meets with students to discuss opportunities available in the Shenango Valley, learning about their interests and connecting them with relevant job opportunities. To combat the perception that there's nothing to do in the Shenango Valley, Penn Northwest's Homegrown Initiative offers the Future Leaders Program. One member of the group is Delaney Lance from Greenville, Pennsylvania, the youngest ever member of the Mercer County Bar Association Board. Another member, Kieran Davis, returned to Sharon, Pennsylvania after living in Huntsville, Alabama to care for his sick mother. Davis, who is 29, is a business advisor with the Minority Business Assistance Center at the Youngstown Business Incubator and also runs a clothing line focused on mental health and self-love. 32-year-old Nick Pachiba is another transplant to Mercer County. He moved from Pittsburgh after realizing the potential for growth and community involvement in the Shenango Valley. Pachiba now works as a wealth advisor. You can read more in the story on our website. Residents of International Towers are set to return to their homes on Wednesday following more than two months of displacement due to the Realty Tower explosion. Approximately 170 residents were evacuated in mid-June over concerns about the potential collapse of Realty Tower, which experienced a gas explosion on May 28th. The explosion resulted in one fatality, several injuries, and the displacement of residents from both Realty Tower and International Towers. The Stambaugh Building, home to the Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown Hotel, was also affected by the explosion, but has now been cleared to reopen immediately. The hotel plans to welcome guests starting at 3 p.m. Wednesday. In related news, Mark Canzanetta announced that his restaurant, formerly known as Bistro 1907 and located inside the Stambaugh Building, will reopen with a new name, Casa di Canzanetta, and a fresh concept. This is going to be more family-oriented more family style, more um, old school Italian versus modern Italian. As the demolition of Realty Tower proceeds, the City of Youngstown's Board of Control has approved a payment to MS Consultants for overseeing city-owned infrastructure surrounding the site. Plans are also underway to rebuild the damaged portion of Federal Street with work expected to start in September and conclude by November. And Stewart Healthcare System, now managed by a transition committee excluding executives involved in controversial real estate deals under criminal investigation, is accusing its landlord, Medical Properties Trust of Alabama, of undermining efforts to sell its hospitals. Stewart acknowledges that its leases with Medical Properties Trust are expensive and burdensome, with above-market rental obligations that have crippled operations for years. Since 2022, Stewart has paid $870 million in lease payments, even after accounting for certain rent concessions provided by the trust. In a motion filed in U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Houston, Stewart claims the process of selling its 31 hospitals has been challenged by the self-interested involvement of Medical Properties Trust. The motion seeks to reject the leases associated with local hospitals operated by Stewart, including Trumbull Regional Medical Center in Warren, Hillside Rehabilitation Hospital in Howland, and Sharon Regional Medical Center in Sharon, Pennsylvania, effective August 16th. 
And that is going to do it for today's Daily Buzz. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you'd like to dive deeper into any of these stories, links are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mike Moliterno. Seven Seventeen Credit Union: Savings power to give your business an extra boost. Business savings, certificates, and business money market. Seven Seventeen Credit Union: Make your money work as hard as you do. Check out our business money market and CD rates at seven seventeen cu dot com slash rates.